Lights, camera, action. Are we good? We going. Action. We going. Yes. It's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're <coughs> on. That's on. That's on. I'm going to move this slightly because... Yeah, you know, do. Move so that I don't there. have to look at whatever. Do, yeah. So oh, wonderful. Um, how are you? How's life? How are things? I'm good. We didn't... Um, to close a loop from the last episode, this podcast is just us opening loops, <laughs> never closing them. Someone sends us a message to go, you know you brought that up and then yeah. went on a tangent for 45 minutes and then That's said, right. thank you for listening. I blame you for most of that because I, 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 I do... Because <laughs> you're a very focused chap, I'm are quite, you? I'm quite focused and diligent and you're just, <laughs> you're just, to be honest, you're a habitual time waster and you just bring everything off into fucking cuckoo land and then, you're, then we're just like fucking, you're like at a party, you can't remember why you're there you're like what were we even talking about i just like cuckoo land huh cuckoo land's better than england it would be right? better than england <laughs> it'd be funny to pronounce it wrong the whole time this godforsaken yeah. shithole we anytime call. you're talking to an english person just call it england england <laughs> land of ings they would get so angry about that yeah. as well they would be fucking furious this yeah. has reminded me actually i've got a rubber band on my wrist because I've had to... Did we talk about dollar, this in the podcast? Bills, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that it? It's not what they call like a like rubber band man. That's like, a, that's like a guy with a lot of money. Does that mean they has to like put a rubber band around, around his, the, his cash? Stacks of fucking cash, lad. Yeah. He needs rubber band or the cash going to go everywhere. Mine's for a much less uh, good reason. Is it? Uh, it's to tie up your, your ill-fitting foreskin, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Which I went to get my cream for today, but they, Did didn't, they didn't have it at the pharmacy. Did you tell them it, it was for your chock? <laughs> you got cream for my chock. Well, what I did realize in the queue for the pharmacy is that I heard the woman beside me in the queue. Um, she she had a Belfast accent. And normally I'd be like, oh, where are you from? Just yeah. to say hello or whatever. Uh, but I realized the queue at the pharmacy is somewhere where you can't do that. Yeah. Because you're about to hear what ailments they have. Right. Because they walk up to the front and they go, I'm here to pick up a I've prescription. I've been doing a lot of fanny farts. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I've, I've, woke, I've woken up my children several nights in a row well, with geez, my that'd fanny be, farts. That would be a good, a good fucking pair. Me with my heel yeah. fitting, my player my fit foreskin. Uh, that's what I'm going to refer to. My kyok's in trouble. <laughs> You're fanny, my kyok or some dude, aren't we? <laughs> is this am I nailing Northern Irish? <laughs> is that a, that's an impression know. of me, which is wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey fucking right look at the fucking crocs i used to play the fucking bassoon in scale me got an english girlfriend <laughs> weren't love well this links to the that's my that was, was that a good impression did i nail that yeah i think you nailed it um it's i mean it's not quite your leboeuf levels but it's, right. it's a decent impression i mean this stems from what were you about to say were you about to interrupt no no, if you need no, to interrupt, you can interrupt. Say. That's I'm okay. not actually not going to say another word yeah. on this one. <laughs> Let you take the fucking rain. See how you like it. See, Let you do the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Go on, you I'd take say it away. The question asking is probably the heavy lifting of the yeah. podcast world. No. Nope. Hmm? Absolutely not. Hmm. It's not called the fucking Bird Chrysler experience, is it? Why, what's, why, why did you make that reference? Because he yaps a lot. He talks a lot and Joe Rogan asks the questions. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And doesn't get the jokes. That's my role here. To not get to the jokes and ask questions. <laughs> the Rogan roll. Um, no, so tell me. Go Rubber on. band. Yes. What happened was I keep I keep leaving the oven on. Yeah. Like when I leave the house, mm. I'll cook dinner and then I'll have to run out to get because I constantly get myself into a rush. In the past month, I would say I haven't uh, got the bus without sprinting for it. Yeah. Which is just idiocy. It is. Well, I, I, to be honest, I do that a lot. I'm yeah. always running around. Yeah. And everyone's always uh, like, to, what was she doing? It's quite unseemly to try. I'm just always fucking chaos. Me too, man. At all times. And I have so little to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I have so little on my plate. In life? Yeah. That's not true, lad. I've not. People I'm have absolutely jobs. up the walls and I do less. And I, like, I have less going on than you and I'm apps so overwhelmed. But I, but I just think people have actual jobs. But I guess there's less chaos to an actual job. You just go to the same place every day. Yeah. Same hours and then it's fine. You just you, know everything is right. You just sort of a tour, this uh, podcast, you're doing clips, you're subtitling, you're doing your stand-up clips, you're going out, you're doing gigs, you have to create even new show it's material. to stretch my foreskin. Huh? It's to stretch my foreskin. You to stretch your fucking rotten little foreskin. <laughs> you should get circumcised and just call it a fucking day. That's the, that's like, 
There's one ro- round of this cream, and if that doesn't work, it's Get off. Get it off. That's, that's See what, you later. No, that's what the doctor said. Really? Yeah. Getting it fucking done. Yeah. Going straight fucking... Going Jew- Jewish. Judaism. Yeah. Lad, I would love you as a Jew. It would do numbers on the podcast. Oh. Fuck, Zuck- I would love that. Zuckerberg would be more of a fan that we would be up the algorithm, oh I think. Oh my God. As soon I as you be- get circumcised, your algorithm does better. If you become a Jew, I'm doing it too. <laughs> I, so I, so I, we can get married? I swear to God. I'm dead serious. <laughs> so we can get married and be in love and uh, and adopt a, a Jewish squirrel. Um, I would love to adopt a, a few little Jewish squirrels. because they hoard squirrels. all the nuts? Yeah. And I feel like they fucking do. And, uh, <laughs> and I love a little, I think they'd look great with a little yarmulke, you know, like a little squirrel in the yarmulke. Well, yeah. And we'd have them there and, and we'd, uh, you know, we'd probably make some kind of children's TV show with the squirrels. Just and imagining Ben Shapiro them. as a squirrel now. Absolutely. <laughs> little bollocks. I was like, mm. And they've taken all our nuts. Everybody. You'll see the That little. is what I hear when Ben Shapiro talks, just Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is quite squirrelish. <laughs> he is, he's isn't he? He's a squirrelish too. And he's a little hoarder, he's there's a... no doubt. <laughs> and he always seems like he's just run down from a tree, like run out of a tree. And he's... Yeah. Little bastard. The, the thing um, about liberals. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of uh fucking uh Shapiro and uh you know his hoarding and everything the intellectual you, dark webs you you're a thief you've been thieving can we you've do been this huh? I keep leaving the oven on you're yeah, right one so yeah and so I googled how to stop leaving the oven on because uh. I'm so stupid yeah and like my girlfriend kept coming home and the oven was on and she was very angry about it which I think is just uh but she, I, I felt like slightly and you know, but it did happen like twice in a week yeah. That I'd left the oven on uh-huh. for hours. Yeah, you should have left a note when you left it on and be like, hop in there, you English witch. <laughs> <laughs> have I spoken about this in the podcast mm. that I didn't understand how people killed themselves by putting their head in the oven? You didn't Until understand. very recently. I've never, I, 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 to be honest, you'll be enlightening me right now as well. So you know that's like, a, that's what people say, like a, they, he put his head in the oven and that's how he killed himself. That is, people do do that, do they? The oven's not on. It's a gas oven where you don't ignite the flame. Ah, so you're gassing yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because to be honest, lad, I think I was in the same. I think I thought they were like fucking like making a roast ham at her head. Same. You know? I was like, oh, but surely you just go, fuck no. Surely at some point you just be like, ah, fuck that. <laughs> That's very warm, actually. I'll, I'll head over to the cliff. This is a nightmare way yeah, to kill like myself. Yeah, like to like have this, this, the perseverance yeah. to hold your head in for like I, an hour and a half at 2.20. I, that's what I thought and like, you're like basting yourself like absolutely <laughs> putting a bit of stuffing in your mouth up. and like an orange dog yeah <laughs> lad I actually I'll be dead honest with you I, I I never articulated but I had the exact same idea and I remember always thinking like Christ above that's a <laughs> that's raw like way to kill yourself to it's the worst you, but there are, there are some of them like people like that you know that kill themselves in ways that you're like good lord could you not have What's, you know. What do you think is like the worst way? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, I think... The rest in the bath is mad. The, the rest in the bath is mad. But There's that, no that, way YouTube are letting this stay up, but go on. That, that, that's meant to be all oh, lights after going out there now. Why the fuck's that happen now? I don't know. Maybe Why is everything else on and you're off, you fucking stupid You're cunt. having like trouble like with appliances in this house. Yeah, you know? the oven wasn't working today. Yeah, like you're, you're... I have a fucking bucket of raw chicken over there. What am I supposed to do with it? This house is turning on you. Like yeah, the, we're about to move. It saw us packing boxes and it's gone, how dare you leave me? No, but I think genuinely, I think that there, there is like... Um, that there is there is a spirit to things. And I think in this house right now, there is clearly a hostility towards you and it might be because you're leaving but their light's gone again what the fuck's going well, on well this is it <laughs> i'm telling you it's probably some i honestly it could be someone that you like molested in another life is has a, a spirit has entered this house right give us 30, 30 seconds hold the fort my god i'll hold the fort um i'll tell you i'll tell you that i'd be dead honest i don't think I don't think I've ever really needed him here. So this is actually perfect. Um, You're going to hear a lot of completed stories. So you'll see now I've got myself, I'm kind of dressed up here a little bit because I'm... uh, I'm going on a date after this. Did you smell me? Did you smell the um, Armani code that I'm wearing? You got the the pheromones on? Did you not sniff me? I have a very terrible sense of smell. Smell, smell. 
Can you smell it? I have such a bad sense of smell. I'm really sorry. Fuck. Do you need more? I, I recently I'm just trying ran. to make sure now I'm like, did I remember to put it on? Because if I didn't, this could be a real fucking faux pas. I recently ran out of Paco Rabanne res, uh, Invictus. Yeah. That was my Is Invictus, was that not a movie about apartheid in South Africa? Yes, yeah, both. It's both a movie about apartheid in South Africa and also a fragrance. And is it kind of a smell that evokes apartheid? It smells of apartheid. Right, right. Yeah, it smells of apartheid in okay. rugby boots. Mm. And is that because it, you would wear that because in some ways kind of um, g- genocidal and um, <clears throat> the suffering of others is an aphrodisiac for women? Yeah, English women from, English? from, from, from England. Right. Do you think, and I, <clears throat> and I mean this uh, genuinely, that English women just from his, historically, because if you think about it, the English, of course, the most dastardly servants of the devil that have probably ever walked the earth and Correct. In, invented racism and misogyny and all sorts of um, awfulness. And But you'd have to think that these men were always doing this, but the English women were like, fucking nice class. Nice and class. Excellent. That's I will absolutely continue shagging you and supporting you in your endeavours. Yeah. So there is an element of them. Do you think that that's what your lady is attracted to in you is the conquering aspect of your personality, the the, 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 the latent cruelty, the kind of lust for blood, the, um, I, I don't want to say genocidal, but genocidal. Well, yes, I, on, on our anniversary, yeah. what I'll do before we go out on our, our date night mm. is I will bathe in the blood of colonial people. Right, yeah. Because she like, gets her going. Which ones, particularly? Just the people of colour of any description. Mm. People of colour and then people from the Falkland Islands. The Falklands, isn't that near Ar- Argentina? Yeah, that's the argument, is uh, do Argentina own it or do England own it? And I don't understand anything other than that sentence that I just said. Yeah, I don't really believe in private property anyway, I think, you know, who, it is, I think it's actually quite a silly thing. I was even on my own farm the other day and I was walking the land and I was like, like, this is all at my family's land, like just these fields. If someone else came on, I'd be like, get off, this is ours. Yeah, and you shoot them. Oh, I absolutely would shoot them, would blow their fucking head clean off. <laughs> Back of the brain, splattered all over the edges, blood on the leaves. Yeah. Big time. Blood on the leaves, that's that really sad song. Nina Simone sings it. Does she? Uh, for some reason in my... No, it's called uh, Strange Fruit, but it starts blood on the leaves. Strange Fruit? I've heard a few people refer to you as that. But, um, <laughs> uh, and because it's, I'm a racial justice warrior. That's right. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, uh, but I, th- I thought, isn't it mad that this just land, which is just the earth, that you can just claim? Yes, that's yours. We you own, draw a line. We we own this. That's absolutely mental. Yeah, I remember my mum and dad were saying that they don't technically own the land that the house is on, but they own the house. Right. Like it's a very, and it, it wouldn't cost a huge amount to like just basically like claim the land, but they just never got round to it. Yeah. Now, my father would not have left that rock yeah, on current. Yeah, I don't think You know? So. <laughs> my parents are a bit more passive about the whole land ownership thing. Like, my father, I think I may have kind of mentioned it before, but like, you know, like Stalin, like, wants to get the land in Ukraine. Like, my father would take our neighbor's land if he could. That's his special interest. Oh, but not, yeah, he would have a special operation in the Roaches farm next door. He'd be just over there. He'd have them all made fucking, he'd make sausages out of them. Out with the people, he wouldn't care. Maybe really, that's what I should do with my girlfriend: make, make sausages, sausages out of colonial people and then feed them to her oh, to she, get her riled up. I would, I, and I hate to say this because I've met her and she is nice, but if I had, like, there is just a fucking vibe of cannibalism mm. off of her. Yeah, yeah, I get that from her definitely, and it makes me like her more because it's my, it's like you know, it's like because how many people do you meet that are not cannibals? Most. Most, yeah, and yeah. it gets a bit tiresome. That's right. You just go through every day going, you'd never eat anybody. No, and it's, it's just like... boring. And it's pathetic. Do you know what I said on stage? Have some self-belief. i tell you what pissed me off now. And this pissed... This, 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 this pissed Michael off. This pissed me off, lad. I was doing a show the other day. <laughs> pissed me off. A stand-up comedy show? A stand-up comedy show. And I went on stage and I said, listen... I said, I said, listen, you pigs. That's why I say to them. I said, listen, you filthy pigs, you swine. They say, is this a, is this a show or a fucking farmyard? Look at you. I didn't say that. But what I did say <laughs> was, I go, was, oh, I just realized, you see, like, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, if we were in Germany during World War II, like, we, mm. like I'd be like, I just know it's a terrible realization, but like, you, you know, you would have been a Nazi. You would have pe- been a Nazi, and yeah. people went, I'm talking to, no, 
Yeah. People hate that. People yeah. hate that so much because yeah. people delude themselves into believing that yes. they would be the one person. That's right. That was like, no, there's yeah. statistically no chance that that's true. It's an ab- absolutely insane. Now the joke doesn't get great after because I say I know I would have been a Nazi then because I'm a Nazi now and it's not even cool. That's <laughs> 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 really Which funny. I think is very That's funny. Really but funny. people were like, no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> people were so... Uh, and was this a show mad. in London? It was in London, of course. Lo- young people? Huh? Young people were responding yes, in that fashion? Yes. Well, it's because it was outside London. If you if, you know, if you said that in Scunthorpe, people would be like, yeah, we're Nazis too. Thank God yeah, you, someone yeah, said yeah. it. Thank God, finally, um, Voice of the People. That's right. That would be like McIntyre-esque observational comedy to them. Yeah. They would just be like, yeah, 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 we're on board. But what's the deal with <laughs> Nazi? That's right. Um, oh, speaking I, of Nazis, yeah. this oven thing. This fucking um, oven. Whoa. <laughs> oh, now. Easy, Chief. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so I Googled how to not leave the oven on. Yeah. And basically what's happened is that audio recorder is blinking every so often and it's giving me the fucking yips. Right. I don't know what's happening because there's building work going on on the flat and that light turned off a second ago and I want to fucking... I'm nervous that this isn't going to well, record. No, it's recording, lad. It's good. It, the numbers keep going up and there's a red light on, but it just goes blip every so often and that is... Nah, the, the time's going. You got, I, lad, I'm telling you, for one thing, I think you're having a little bit of a par- paranoid mental break. Well, because you, you just told me this house is fucking haunted the, the and, house and is, they're all against me. I can fucking feel the house is turning on you and the appliances are turning on you. And the cushions, I've seen, there's a, the cushions have a look in them that is, is not of kindness, you know? <laughs> and I just, I just observing that for you to be careful in here because none of these fucking... Um, things, objects, and and uh, appliances have your best interests at heart right now, but we just have to we have to keep going through. We trust it. the equipment. That's right. We, we always we, trust the equipment. You trust you. This is trust the, the equipment. Trust the algorithm. Yes. Trust. Don't trust. Don't trust women. And you're gonna be. Yeah. And <laughs> life will be <laughs> you're good. Easy breezy. Um, I so, love that we make it impossible for anyone on the left or the right to have. <laughs> Any if you have any opinions, if you have any opinions <laughs> on anything, you will fucking hate this podcast. Yeah. That is our vibe. We've pissed off every Jordan Peterson fan. Yeah. And then immediately after we pissed off everyone who got angry at us saying you shouldn't respect people in bed. Yeah. And then just we're just everybody hates us. We're shit in the end. We're cultural shit in the shoe of uh, <laughs> of the internet, um, which is already yeah. a shitty shoe. It's a shitty shoe. We're the shit on the end of the shitty we're, shoe. We're the, like it's 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 shit. It's a lot of different kinds of shit on the shoe, but we're the dog shit. Like the just the stinkiest. You know what a dog shit is? Is like, stinkiest shit. It's the worst. I reckon I could rival a dog on my day. Which your shit? Yeah. I I haven't I I haven't experienced one of your shits, and I I. I don't look forward to it. He's so funny if I just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just experience me now. <laughs> oh, this is Sparta. And just, yeah. That would that would have been good. That would have been commitment to podcasting, uh, but I didn't have a shit ready to go. I did a poo this morning. Yeah. You only shit once a day? Uh, yes, I've been trying to cut down on my shit attempts. Really? Yeah, because I think I was over attempting. I would maybe uh, once a day I would have a shit and then once a day I would attempt to have a shit that wouldn't go well. Wow. But nothing would come and I would just think I needed a shit, but I'm trying to cut down on my attempts at shitting. So I only shit now when I f- I'm fucking desperate to shit. I, you, you you build up a, just a desperation, a deep need. And it is. It has been better. It's been massively improved my life. Really? Just waiting and wait, just that delayed gratification. Wow. And then you get there, like, good day. Because I'm like, I'm just like fucking, I'm in and out the whole day. Like, I'm What's like, you like, over, like, what, how many? Six. Six poops? I would say so. That's two. Yeah. That's like but that so not, many poops. It's a lot. Of, it's, a, it's a lot of poops. And I, and I feel like um, I'm feeling I might be a bit of a freak. Even when I was in school, when I was in secondary school, I remember Mr. Philpot. He had a real, he took a real uh, nasty dislike to me, but it was mainly, it was my own fault. What I did was one day I, uh, I was... <laughs> you shit uh, in his coffee cup? Huh? What? No, 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 no. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, I didn't. I missed it. But um, <laughs> I, uh, what I did one day was uh, I was leaving. I had to leave class to go to the dentist or something. So what I did is I put my phone underneath the podium of, uh, that he would stand on and... Um, and then for like assemblies and stuff so i left and left my phone under there yes in the glass hall 
No, it was not in the glass hall. It was just in our classroom. Right. And uh, and so then everyone would call my phone and it had the Father Ted ringtone of... Yeah. A lot of people don't know the lyrics to that. Do you know the lyrics? Yeah, written by Graham Linehan. No way. Women are women are women are women. <laughs> and those weird fucking trans people can suck my fucking dick. I'm on Twitter. That's the uh, I'd say it probably is. That is that that is feels like that is what you would put to it now. God. <laughs> It's such a shame, such a but, fall uh, from grace. So that would be under Mr. Phil Potts' uh, desk, and and then he was going absolutely insane. I was going out of the class, but it was just a kept going. Father Ted, he's like, "Who's that? Who has the phone out? Who?" Blah, blah, blah. But he didn't. He, he didn't. He didn't realize that was coming from right underneath him. And uh, yeah. but anyway, I ended up getting. I ended up getting. Uh, I get, got coffered. So he did. He didn't like me. But the thing was, I would have to go. <clears throat> I I had to bring in a note because I'd have to go for poops during class. You've medical need for lots of poops. I'm just a fucking. I'm a, a poopy boy. Poop to the scoop. Yeah, man. I it's think so. I loved that song. Huh? You know that song? The Kanye song. Yeah, I loved that song. It's weird. Why? Because it was. Uh, it was a bad one. No, because it was so good. Like the beat was so good, so well produced. Right. And then he just comes in for the only verse of the song. He's like, "Scoop to the poop." Yeah. <laughs> Poop to the scoop, scoop the woop the poop. Well, it was a real case of fuck poop? you to the listener and poop? yeah. <laughs> I think maybe and his point possibly was like my beats are so good I could say anything here. Yeah, and, and also it's gonna be good. to me the rhythm of it because it was all ba 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 bam ba 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 ba. It was all uh, triplets, and I thought that was making fun of people like Migos and mumble rappers who just go. I'll be honest, and it may and it may show my ignorance, and I'm sure it will because people will be at you in the the comments. But like the mumble rap stuff, and this sound, it, you just sound like a dinosaur. But I just I don't get I, it. Huh? I don't get it. I just could not on any level. If you're talking to me about Jay Z, Nas, like Biggie Smalls, like these great lyricists, it's unbelievable rhyming yeah. scru- structures. They're fucking doing triple entendres of meanings and words. Even fucking Drake in his day, Kendrick, unbelievable. And then you just have these guys go, hum, dum, hum, and you're like, kind of like, sound like Bruce <laughs> Springsteen a what? bit. Yeah. yeah but and, and you're like, this is, don't piss in my pocket and tell me it's raining. This, you're stealing a living. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, what yeah, yeah, the yeah. F- yeah, yeah. I, I just, anyway. It's like the, I like that of any art form. It happens in comedy as well. I love the people who will share like a video of Dave Chappelle talking about how, you know, comedy's art and you're looking for like truth and like getting beyond just what's funny and trying to cut to the core of something. Yes. And then you'll see their act and you're just like, what? Yeah, fuck? right. <laughs> you're just talking about piss and shit. Yeah, <laughs> they're talking like, isn't dating tricky? And you're like, right. What? Yeah. How can you like? And you see those mumble rappers talking about it. They're like, oh man, I'm just trying to like be an artist and like speak my. And you're I'm like, tr- I was what? trying to like, I was just trying to like capture a certain feeling from a time that a couple of summers back that I was in a situation with a girl and and I just it was a, a feeling that um I just try to capture with the beat in the delivery and it's just him just being damn bam wrong skirt skirt yeah <laughs> and you're like oh you've captured it you've captured that that's gonna be yeah just put that in the archives we, we you've yeah. articulated that when perfectly. words fail music speaks that's yeah. really you've got <laughs> um, I feel like sound like such old losers just being like what is this mumble rap um, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, the thing was, so I had to give Phil Pot, my teacher, a note that was basically like my mother wrote a note, just being like, "Listen, Mike has to shit a lot." And <laughs> it wasn't even a doctor's uh-huh. note; it was just no, your it was my being mother like, just being he's like, a "Poopy boy." Yeah, he's put like anytime we go into town, like my mother'd have to like find. Yeah. T- I'd be like, "No, oh, you know, um, I don't want. Why am I saying this out in the public?" But anyway, <laughs> so um, so Phil Pot, and he hated that because then I had the note, and then I was like, you know, I abused it. I was like, "Yeah, you should have been called Phil Pot." Yeah. 
<laughs> I was forever filling pots. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so uh, he was jealous. <laughs> he yeah. would have thought by nominative determinism he would have been the shitty boy. That's right. But he never shit once in his whole life. He was a very old man. He was a very old man from Cork. He, I believe he fought in the War of Independence. But um, <laughs> I think he might have killed Michael Collins. Um, I'm pretty pretty sure it was him. But so he, he's dead now. Um, but uh, so. Uh, but Phil Pot, so I would literally go sit by abuse. I was such a little shit mm. in school. So I would go and I take I take the shit and then I come back in and I sit down for two minutes and I just be like, guess who needs to <laughs> shit again? And Phil Pot would be like, you can't need to shit again. And then I'd be like waving the no. You can't, boy. You can't. <laughs> yeah, you can't, boy. You, can't, boy. <laughs> you don't need to shit again. And I'd be like waving the note like a little flag. <laughs> My oh. mother says, um, <laughs> I was a nasty can't. little character. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you something else. I used. This was, I was, a, I was a real king of like, like just rotten subversion. Like, so just, <laughs> I was just a, a little anarchist. So we, we had this uh, vice principal. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll say his name is Licky Ration um, for legal reasons. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Licky Ration would come in and... Uh, and he'd be talking now. He was constantly like, he, he was at war with students, like just real little battles, mm -hmm. you know? So he'd come in uh, to like give an announcement to the class. And I'd really just want to give him a fuck off, but do something that he can't really touch for. So I just make little faces at him like this. <laughs> just like this. And he'd look at you like just the most, like just like, yeah. like, and he'd be like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'd be like, nothing. He, just, he can't get you. Just he can't it. really get you because what are you doing? Just it's looking just weird. Being violently smug is all you're doing. Just, <laughs> he's just like you know, he'd be coming in like asking for all. I'd be like Michael Rice, and I'd be like here. And just, like, <laughs> just and it drove. You could see he'd be looking at you. He'd stop that! Stop that! Furious. Like, stop what? Yeah. You know. Um, I love that little. Just small enough that like they can't get really annoyed, but because they're teachers. Like they do, and it's always insane for them to be angry at a child. That's like right. always, they're like a middle-aged lady, and they're like somehow furious about what a twelve-year-old's done. Yeah, there was a couple of lads in my maths class who just gradually, over the course of the lesson, would turn their table a hundred and eighty degrees, <laughs> and she wouldn't notice until like the end of the lesson. She'd be like, "Adrian, <laughs> yeah," but they would just like every couple of minutes, just Dum. yeah, just uh, like. Dum. I love it. I love it. Like we used to have, well, I will honestly say we used to have a comic genius in our class. His name was Colm Dowling. He got, he got kind of kicked. He got, he wasn't allowed to do fortune. So he got kicked out of our class basically. But I've never laughed as hard. He, he had, um, he had characters he was doing. He would take his shoes and socks off and put a sock on his hand and go up to the teacher and start talking with a sock <laughs> on his hand. He would constantly in religious class put up his hand and like a religious teacher, Mr. Forrest, would just call him and he go, Sir, was Jesus gay? <laughs> <laughs> well, call him, we actually don't know if there is any evidence of that. He's like, I heard he was gay. <laughs> <laughs> and he used to go around, he'd put a little like sheep, like a little fluffy sheep doll in between his fly and he'd go up. It was just, he really, he really um, didn't care. And he made the, the first three years of our, uh, our school years. Well, that's just, yeah, unbelievably just absolutely. entertaining. Those people who just don't give a fuck, number one, yeah. almost definitely have horrific home lives. Right. That are causing a lot of chaos mm -hmm. within them that they need to like vent somewhere. Yeah. But listen, we'll take. Well, be we'll the audience them. for it. That's yeah, great. That's absolutely right. It's guy in school. I don't think it was ever sussed out exactly who it was. But somebody shit in an empty baked beans can and left it in the toilet. Really? Yeah, just upside down on the floor of the toilet. <laughs> so when the cleaner came in and lifted it up, just shit everywhere. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's brutal, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah, but we had fellas in Kieran's, like uh, where I was, who like uh, pissed inside a lad's desk. Two of them just pissed. In, like in through the thing like on top of all his books um we had another lad the lads took it like got his school bag and shit on top of the, into his school bag. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's horrific did you have like d-bagging where you would turn people's bags inside out uh we yeah yeah we yeah, did do that. we yeah. had one there were these basic big pillars in the in the mile of our school which was kind of like it was where the ca basically the canteen was during lunch time but it was just like a walkway the rest of the day and uh, there's massive pillars that would go up like three stories, basically. 
and uh, <laughs> people would steal people's bags and just tape them halfway up. They would like go on someone's shoulders, yeah. tape it halfway up the pillar, and they just don't <laughs> have a bag for the rest of the day because nobody can be fucked to get a ladder out and just go fucking get it. Yeah, I mean, it really was a coliseum of cruelty. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely yeah. wild. I, yeah. lo- I loved all that stuff, but I was always too like nervous to get involved. The biggest thing I ever did was on the last day of like that prank day at the end yeah. of the school, um, I printed out, I'd found this website where you could basically on A4 pages, it would set you up a Word document that would print out a massive version of an image and all you had to do was stick the A4 pages together. Yeah. So I printed out, I like edited a massive picture of the vice principal um, Mr. Dobbin mm-hmm. printed it out like the height of like six foot tall, probably like eight foot wide, and hung it in the middle of the mall. And beneath it, it just said "Obey," and it was just his fucking angry face just there on top of it. And you were the you were the architect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like you were the mastermind. The, yeah, yeah, and then I hung it up. You and were the Che Guevara. He walked the up and went, oh, "That's nice." He said, "I was like, you're a psycho." But you can't be just saying obey. You've got to give a slur. You've got to <laughs> say, are you joking me? We, this, this will show you the difference. We obey. What? Like, he's probably like sick. I was just like, he's a bit, he was a pretty dictatorial figure. Yeah, but you don't tell a dictator like, you're a dictator. Yeah, he's like sick. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going for. You made his day, you little fucking. Yeah, well, that I you just didn't, strange I, I, fruit. I know. I just thought it would be like. I thought it would be like he'd be like, oh, I didn't think I was that bad, and he would change his ways, but he didn't at all. Lad, we had a riot when I was in <laughs> second year of school. I'm not joking. To this, to this very day, it's is the best day in my life. We came back from lunch break. It was about five to two, two o'clock class to start again. And there was six years, like lads in six year okay. at the other end of the hurling pitch. And just to double check, in, in the South, it's like six years, like your final year. That's right. Yeah. I was in second year at the time. So I was 14 and just full of fucking anarchy and chaos and wanted to be involved. Really believed, like I identified as a bold child. I remember when I was going into secondary school in uh, Kieran's, I sat down with a friend of mine who was from another school, but we played hurling together, but we were going to be in the same class in Kieran's. I said, listen, here's the deal. If we're going to sit together in class, I'm a very bold child. I'm, I misbehave a lot. And you're going to need to get on board with that or it's not going to work out. <laughs> like I actually had to sit down with them. That's so funny. About, but do you think that is a thing with like when you tell a kid, like, you know, you're being very bold, you like, or you're, you're a very bold boy. It's like that almost becomes like their identity. Damn. Or is that probably the better thing to do is be like, listen, you're a good lad. You shouldn't be doing this stuff. That's right. That, that's that's why that works. Yeah. Because you instead, because then when they go to do something bad, they go, "Oh no, I'm a good lad." Well, so I shouldn't do that. I think I was told I was a good boy too much. Yeah, and it's it's made you a kind of a buttery, soft, kind of um, <laughs> insignificant <laughs> soup of kind of bland soup. Bland soup. A soup. Yeah, you're a soup. Um, you're a soup, and not and not one I'd I'd kind of eat regularly. Um, Only when you're ill. <laughs> yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a healing soup, like a chicken noodle, <laughs> chicken noodle soup. Something that doesn't taste good, but it's like this. Will you'll feel? You know, yeah. It's not going to do you any harm. You I'm an ayahuasca soup. You're an ayahuasca soup. I have psychedelic properties, but also make you throw up lots. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lad. You're an ayahuasca soup. So, but anyway, so I would, so we had in my primary school, we had a kind of a Mrs. Trunchbull-esque wow. principal who was like, like just truly like a villain to like mm. the, to, to the students and like my little brother, Nimnog. So he was like, he had like a real feud with... Uh, this is because he's obsessed with like rules and righteousness and justice. Well, he just doesn't like injustice. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah. if you're not uh, given by the rules, I remember one time he picked up a ruler and started smacking. He's like, I'll oh, come at you. <laughs> you know, he was like, you know, he was, he was uh, out of his mind. But yeah. I was also, you know, like I had a rebellious spirit as well. So I was fucking anti Miss Hulin as well because yeah. this, this is this is her name um, and she was I remember I regret to this day on my last day in primary school I I gave her a hug and um, she was just hugging people that were leaving yeah. and I hugged her and to this day I'm like fuck why did I yeah, hug you should have stuck it to the man. No, I should have stuck it to her. She didn't deserve the hug. And people are always like, oh, just be the bigger person. No. I you, hate being the bigger person. It's yeah, shit. It's shit. And sometimes you'll regret it forever. Because yeah. you should have fucking, you should have, like when I hugged, I should have just been like, you stupid fucking bitch. Spite's great. You stupid, you stupid bitch. You're I had a moment of that once yeah. where I got fired 
from so the often what happens at, at my uni SU is people who worked at the bar and I worked at the bar from my first year till my fourth year of yeah. uni right and I was like a bar supervisor and all this stuff and I was due to stay on like it really helps bridge the gap yeah when you're leaving uni and going like no more student loan or whatever it's just like I can keep doing this for a year build up my like all the bits I need to like get going and then it's fine I can like just nice little bridge into employment and leaving uni yeah but the the manager left and the manager he said to me he was like you know you could you've been a supervisor for like three years you could do this job you could be the bar manager like a full time role but you could definitely do it and I was like I was like humming and hand about it but I was like no I don't want to I don't want to go down the path like because then it's just a path of like once you have a salary you're like oh this is quite nice you, you don't want to get, get used to money you young. get raised Cause, you, cause you're, like, you're, you're just you're like you're gonna be afraid to I was move just like over. no I need to fucking yeah broaden my horizons and not get stuck in it I'd seen that happen to too many people so then they got this other guy in and I think at that point I had the per- I was the person who'd been working at the bar the longest like nobody most seniority you were a veteran yeah you and would he be was, respected and it, he was brand new as the manager he'd come in externally right and I was and he kind of arrived and like in the crossover period we'd had like a little bit of like a few little arguments and a I'd bit of like, friction not a huge amount but just just bit. just like he was like oh you need to do it this way and I was like well no we do it this way because of this and then or I just, and this has always been my thing why do we need to do it that way right I just need to understand like because if we're doing it that way there's obviously a reason we're doing it that way and if you explain it to me and I don't have a rebuttal I'm autistic. You spell it out for me. I mean, I'm going to go along with it. Does it does feel like an autistic thing, but I'm just right. like, why? I just need to know why. I, I refuse to have that because I'm in charge. That's why. I'm, I'm with you on that. I just hate it. It's my least favorite thing. Like my least favorite I thing. I hate it that too. I want to shit myself. My, yeah, my dad Honestly. ever said, like, because I'm your father. I hate. Yeah, fuck that's, off. That's like, you know the way, like from the way you were raised, you like have rules for how you're going to be as a parent. Right. I've like lodged in my brain that I will, if I ever catch myself saying, because I'm your father and you should do what I say. I am your father. That's, ga- that's game over. You're being, you're that's be- bad. You're Don't being do that. a dick. Yeah. Don't do that. Explain it to me. You can't just say, if you say why, because that's the why. Well, fuck you. Fuck you, Captain. You've got a mutiny <laughs> on your hands. I'm going to shit. I'm going to shit in your shoes. You're not even going to know who did it. I'm going to fucking subvergent. This is the riot. This yeah, is what yeah, happened yeah, with yeah. the riot. This like. is what so, but, 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 but. Yeah. Um, so, but then I ended up, basically the new manager had told the higher ups to not have me back after I graduated. He said you were a cancerous element. I, I don't tumor. know the words that he said. You I were don't a, know the you words were a that he said. Tumor become, in the bar. It had become a whole thing. Right. We, this is a lot. What? <laughs> you were a malignant tumor in the bar and you were causing it to rot from the inside and he wanted you out. He wanted you cut out. Yeah, that, that is what it felt like. I felt like the Cristiano Ronaldo of the bar. <laughs> you were the Cristiano. Cristiano in his last season at minus, United. Minus the raping. Huh? <laughs> minus the raping. Because what you did was technically only fondling. Because <laughs> you couldn't get hired. Because you couldn't get hired. Isn't that right? <laughs> I don't know what I've become. I've just the coffee, the caffeine has hit, and now I'm like, I don't know if the force can be doing anything more than fondling. <laughs> <laughs> Lad, if you get circumcised, I'm gonna be buzzing. <laughs> I'm, and I swear to God, if you get circumcised, I'm getting circumcised. But so there was a hug between me and the new bar manager, and I wish I had just whispered in his ear. Yeah, I got offered your job before you did. Yeah, I just, I just, yes, I wanted. Because you did hug him. Yeah. Fuck, and you know you shouldn't have. Yeah, because and it, it was never because he did. We'd you. Never had the conversation. Yeah. I only heard from the higher ups that he'd said fire me right and to this day like we were on a stag do together yeah and it never it never came up that i was like hey man i know you got me sacked and i want you to know that i got offered your job before you got offered your job that's right do you know what and i had this recently it's when you fucking it's when you forgive someone like you do the gesture of forgiveness so now in his head he thinks oh give me a hug he's fine so he's been let off the hook kind of emotionally yeah. but you didn't forgive him no. right and i've done i've had this recently in a situation where i forgave someone too quickly because i was just like uh, and then after i and i'm like oh fuck now i've said it's fine but it's not fine spite's good right spite bitterness holding grudges yeah. it's very important and good I, I think we talked about this i did we talk about it on the podcast but like i was in a relationship before 
or what the girl would do, and this, because she would, do you know what she would do? She would coerce forgiveness. She would fucking coerce it, right? With suck so, jobs. Huh? With suck jobs. <laughs> I fucking wish with suck jobs. <laughs> that'd be such fucking, that'd be such decent. Like, that would be so, such a great, like, gesture. And she would get completely forgiven and absolved of all her sins and made into, like, a fucking parishioner of Christ if she did that. No, what she would do. It'd be so funny if she sucked your dick and you gave her penance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were like, four Hail Marys. <laughs> <laughs> it she would have been ten. She just goes over there with your, I'm already on my knees. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't swallow till they're done. <laughs> Do the, don't say it here, Mary, with a mouth yeah. full of gum. Oh no, full of gum. <laughs> with like just tacky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, uh, disgraceful, disgusting, and wrong-minded. But you know, <laughs> what she would do, right? And this is just this is the height of um, you know just fucking blackguard. What she would do is if I got upset, if she did something wrong. And then I'd get upset. This is what she'd do. She'd get so upset that I'm upset. Yeah. That I'd end up having to console her yeah. for the shit she fucking did. That's women. What? That's what they do. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. The number of times when a, when a, when a woman uh, wins an argument, the man has to apologize. When right. a man wins an argument, the man has to apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so this would be literally it, right? She she just start going. She'd do something bad, and then next thing she's just going, and I'd be like, "What are you going?" She'd be like, <laughs> she'd be like "You're, a, you're a bad." I mean, and then I'd be like, "Yeah, but," <laughs> and so then I end up having to go over and start like rubbing her and just be like, "Oh, it's okay." <laughs> no, 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 I'm and terrible. I, and I'm I'd the be, worst I'd person. Be, I'd be like rubbing her. I'd be like, "She'd be like, you're mad at me. You shouted at me. You called me." I'd be like, "You did spit in my." mother's face you know <laughs> she, she'd be like, I, I thought that would be funny I don't know, I don't know what you thought that would be funny <laughs> okay you know she'd seen your stand up <laughs> <laughs> seems like the type of thing Mike would do <laughs> yeah anyway this anyway. rubber band the rubber band <laughs> fuck <laughs> the rubber band the rubber fucking band let's get to it it's taken uh, so I had to Google how to stop leaving the oven on, which felt like a real stupid thing to Google. It's the dumbest thing I've heard Googled. And uh, I've heard I've heard like people Googling, how can you shove a live crow up a Japanese woman? <laughs> and this is dumber. And when I say I've heard of someone doing it, I've <laughs> Googled it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would love, and I don't mean to be crude, I would love to see someone who is a Japanese citizen between the ages of 25 and 37, a woman shoving a live crow up their pussy. <laughs> Michael, 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 no. Michael, every, so often, every so often I have to push back on what this podcast is becoming. Oh, and this is a moment where right. I have to push back against okay. the crows inside the Japanese we've, women. We've crossed the line. Yeah, it's a bit much. But what if it, but what if it were, but, but what, what if it were to live? Like a modern day Nagasaki? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I've crossed the line and I've come back over into the land of the decent and the, you know, the civilized. And I apologize. I had to Google how to... I honestly thought, do you know those moments where you Google something and you go, no one's going to have asked this question before because it's so stupid. That's right. Like there's going to be no answer to this because Mm -hmm. no one's been as stupid as me Mm -hmm. for this to happen multiple times. Yeah. I was like, how do you... But I was hopeful. I was like, how do you stop leaving the oven on? And there's a thing where... You put a rubber band on the dial of the oven. Mm-hmm. When you turn the oven on, you yeah. put it on your wrist. Mm-hmm. And then you don't put it back on the dial. You don't take it off your wrist until the oven's off again. Right. So that's what I've had to do. Although I have turned the oven off and not put this back on. So it's already fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up my methods. But it has been helping, but I feel like a fucking idiot every time I do it. Every time I do it, I'm like, yeah, this is necessary. Otherwise, I will burn the house down. Is this the end of the rubber band story? <laughs> because we've been waiting 40 minutes for the end. You just kept interrupting me. Oh, I was I, just saying there's a little fact about this. Do you know what? See, what you have to do, This is and this is my method of storytelling. <clears throat> you, you come to the end of the story, and then you're like, whoa, I don't think that, I don't think that cut the cheese. And then you talk about shoving something up your <laughs> hole. 
So yeah, and, and then over I, the line. you need a punishment as well. I'm trying to develop more ways to keep the oven from being on when it's not supposed to be. So if I accidentally leave it on now, I shove uh, whatever bacon trays in there, just up your ass, hot. That's a great story. <laughs> Genuinely, that's a really good story. That's the best story I've heard you tell on this pod so far. Well done. Um, and now you're learning. Now, well, now I don't have the confidence to talk about my thievery. You're th- lad, you're a you're 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 a criminal. Well, we'd spoken on the podcast about yes. how I I don't really steal things very much, and you said it was important for Irish people to steal things. So I got caught up in it. <laughs> oh, did, did that actually influence the whole thing? Really? God, I, that makes I got me so caught happy. Up with a that, bad crowd. And it's you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad for you. It's so good. You really I'm, bring out the words to me. I'm real corrupt and influence. I but I was it. at this gig that was in like a private student residence, very swanky. And I said all this in the last podcast, yeah. which just never got around to what I stole. And the green room was in the library mm. of like the reading room of this. And it was just like walls filled with books and stuff. And um, I was kryptonite sad. to a dummy like you. Yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, everybody's written all these. And I'm now looking at my joke book going, these are just words, no, like one word per joke. Yeah. Just goes, talk about that for a bit, then talk about that for a bit. And these people have put effort into writing out their prose. Yeah. Fucking gay. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I was sat there and I was also thinking about our friend who has been cancelled recently pope. yes the pope who's been cancelled recently i love that Too ai old. image of the the pope in that white puffer jacket i don't know if you saw it i haven't seen it oh, i flew around twitter it's so funny good is it it's just this, pope not on this proper like like pimpish yeah white jacket um but basically i so i'd wanted to buy this book for a while and the book is called so you've been publicly shamed ah. by john ronson yeah and i was like well i'd be interested in reading that currently and you know i've had a bit of fucking People getting angry at me for saying stuff online, which happens to us as well. That's right. We make fun of Jordan Peters. That's right. Um, These are sour tastes in the mouth of the dumb. And I was just sat, end of the gig, ready to leave. And I just just looked, and I am aware the promoter of this gig listens to this podcast. So if you do hear it... uh, I can give the book back if you want. But my reasoning for stealing stealing it was that all the books were untouched. So it was a, a library for show. Mm. It was like 90% of the books nobody had ever read. They had perfect spines. They'd never been opened. And do you feel that these books in a way were were akin to like in Toy Story, like the toys that never get played with by a child? I was like, well, somebody should. Well, I was like, well, nobody's going to fucking miss it. Right. It's just here to make the people who live here feel clever. Mm. Because when they bring dates home, they can go, that's the fucking reading room. Right. Yeah. That's where I read. Yeah. And they don't. You, you think they it, don't. You think it was all fur coat and no knickers. This was a... I've never heard that phrase before, but yes. Yes. Perfectly sums up the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly thought it would be more likely that I would pull out that book and it would open a secret door to like a sex dungeon. Mm. That's what I thought was more likely to happen than me just, you know, just going, oh, I've been meaning to buy this. I was about right. to order it on the bus home and, and it was right there in front of me and it hadn't been touched and I the gig hadn't gone well. So I was annoyed at the people that lived bombed. there. No, I don't okay hosting right. to a very unreceptive group of people because it was in their fucking living room. And you were doing... And it you was were, in their living room, And you were doing Mike. your crowd work stuff. Yeah. And that's your unbelievable. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm English. <laughs> stupid. Stupid, man. <laughs> what do you work at? I'm um, actually working in a hospital. It's the fucking help, bitch. <laughs> And that's, it's really good. It's actually, it's really good. Look at this, some of his clips. Um, Come see me on tour. <laughs> Not very many tickets left. So, How's your tour? Huh? What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what, my one of the fucking, my one around Buckingham Palace that I actually do. <laughs> my changing of the guard tour. That's literally the only tour that I'm I have tour, going on. 4 p.m. every day. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, tips are welcome. Um, <laughs> if you watch or listen to this podcast, please actually go pay Mike to give you a tour of Buckingham Palace. I would fucking love that. I will do change of the guard. So the soldiers that change, that guard Buckingham Palace change every day and I'll tell you about the history of the royal what time family is and I'll tell you about the British uh, military. <laughs> 
genuinely just, I shit myself. <laughs> Clean me up. Clean me up. Get my, imagine that was, this whole thing was you just like, what? like a, be like a baby. <laughs> like a sponge bath. I did just think when you said sex dungeon, I could, you do sometimes come across to me as like a big baby. I could see you in a nappy and with a rattler. <laughs> like I could absolutely, <laughs> I'm being like, I'm hungry. You know what I mean? Like I could. Yeah. Did you, have you, have you and herself ever got into any kind of. Not the baby play, no. Wickedness. Apparently Paul Smith's into that. Huh? Paul Smith's into that. Are you, can you, are you allowed to say that here? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's like, like he puts on a nappy. He's and quite the, open about it. He's spoken about it on podcasts where he like, likes to be cuddled and suckled i think i th- i think i'd be fucking i think that sounds cool you'd like to be mothered but you know what i'd like to be so i'd like something to happen you know i think something <laughs> needs to change because i'm do you know what i mean i'd like something extreme at what point in the first date this evening are you going to bring up the fact that you'd like to be suckled oh lad oh i didn't even get i didn't even talk about this this day well, i can, can talk about on, it on the, the patreon. patreon so I have, a, I have a date that i i'm going on this evening. that's why i'm wearing this orange jumper which i think is kind of like to stand out and show that I am a man of fire. You, you peacocking? Kind of a little. I think it's just, I think it colorful. You're a man of fire because you're wearing a peach jumper? What, what man of fire do you know? Um, man of fire sounds like a weird way to call someone gay. Um, he's a man of he, fire. He's, he's flaming. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not on It sounds gay. like what a tribe would call a gay person. He is man of fire. Man of fire. Man of fire. <laughs> he just look over. Oh. That's me, man of fire. Oh. Fireman. Um, no, I. Uh, well, I'm not on gay, so I think I'm. I'm, I'm giving off I'm that. Not I'm not on gay. I'm not on gay. I'm. 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 I'm certainly. I'll certainly. I, we've talked about this before, but at some stage, I'll, I'll have a, a, a little, a little Belarusian boyfriend or something. Someone from uh, Eastern I think the Europe. The Belarusians are quite big. You'd, I think you'd struggle to find a small. Zelensky's quite small. Would you fuck Zelensky? He'd be perfect, Jed. I think what I want is a little, a little Eastern European fella that just wants to be absolutely harmed do you know what I mean because that's what and I'm not joking they have a fucking they they want the Eastern Europeans they want one thing and one thing only in the cot once you fucking once you fucking delve between the, the sheets they want pain is that your experience of Eastern Europeans yep have I ever been with an Eastern European no you think about the four people yeah. in your head there one Scottish, wait, one Irish, one Scottish, three English, five. Three English? Yeah. One Irish? Yeah. You dirty slag. <laughs> you, you're, you're like those numbers, do you? No, it's just the facts you of the matter. You little knacker. One girl from Belfast. Yeah. Uh, Thumbs up. One Scottish lady. That's neutral. Well, two English ladies and one mixed race English lady. Does that help? And th- three fucking scorpion women. Scorpion, is that what she you call people race, from England? She was mixed race, Yeah. But what was the other part? I think she said she was like half Caribbean, half Irish, but she was English. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but what colour was her skin? Mixed race. Yeah? But like, what, what like, because that's the hottest. What? The she mix was of mix hot, but she was completely fucking batshit insane. Was she? She's the one that said she wanted to lick my blood. See, now this is... Do you still have her number? Because this is what... This is what I'm after. I want to be in a nappy. I want to have a little rattler. And I want someone to be just... To, like, to want me... I want them to want to drink my blood. I want a vampiric Caribbean... Of Caribbean descent woman. I've got the woman for you. Lad, send her over. <laughs> well, actually, I don't know if I can because I'm going on this date tonight and this genuinely... This lady I'm seeing tonight... It, I'd, I'd imagine I'll marry her. You think so? I've never met her, but yeah. <laughs> and I'm not. And I know Is this those, what you do? You talk yourself up into some kind of I, frenzy I, before you go on any date? Well, no, no, not really, not really. No, in fact, a lot of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm very cool and uh, calm, and uh, you know, I, obviously, I'll take <sighs> several shits during the day. There's, but, there's um, just no way any of this is no, true. No, none of it's true. But uh, I'm absolutely an, very unhin- cool an, an, and calm. an unhinged mess. Uh, You're like Kramer from Seinfeld. 
in that I'm a comic genius. No, you love saying the N word. <laughs> <laughs> I just think I just think I'm w- one of the only white people who can say it in a nice way. <laughs> That's my belief. Uh, but no, I am. A, I am. So, do you know what's funny now on this one? And. Uh, because we have like we have so much for the patreon in this one and this that's a genuine i have to tell you i'm gonna tell you all about this day and mm-hmm. then i can finish the story about the riot that i had in school i'm also gonna tell you about an email that we got from someone we can maybe end with the email thing that's quite that's right. quite short yeah yeah so we got an email and i'd quite like to find it um because it's uh was it complimentary the email <laughs> no well, i think they just hadn't paid attention what the because if it's not complimentary, you know I don't want to hear it. <laughs> is it oh, saying I my praises specifically? <laughs> so right. here's what the email says. Yeah. Uh, the the subject was, uh, and the email is to, oh, yes, me, uh, podcast interview idea. Right. Considerations with homeschooling. Over the past few years, more parents are choosing to homeschool their children. <laughs> Trenton, New Jersey area developmental psychologist and author Catherine Reed published a post-pandemic book entitled The Genius of Home to help parents who are considering this homeschooling journey for their families. In an interview, she could discuss <laughs> for parents setting a child up for success in, high, in continued higher education using the Waldorf at home method. How can homeschooling improve a child's health and development? The benefits of an individualized lesson plan. What is the difference between traditional homeschooling, other methods of homeschooling and the Waldorf at home <laughs> curriculum? What does it mean to draw forth the person and abilities of a child rather than fully opting for either a teacher or student led approach? The importance of creativity, flexibility, Flexibility and the challenge in the classroom. What is the importance of daily and seasonal rhythms in education? Tips and advice: How to incorporate Waldorf methods and curriculum through Catherine's journey, making lessons your own and individualizing them, walking through a typical day or week using the Waldorf at home method, how the Waldorf method separates school and home life when homeschooling, advice for supporting children's social life while homeschooling them, tips and instructions for making an adaptable educational space in any home, devote space, either a room or a corner, to be a classroom, use flexible items such as folding blackboards or tables to be put away when not in use, organizers can lessen clutter and keep classroom materials in one area create room dividers to delineate I can't believe spaces, you're reading the whole thing I can't believe this it they've chewed out the podcast has ended for everyone needs. two minutes ago this woman is pitching herself to be a guest on our podcast she wants to come on yeah can we get her on <laughs> like would that not be the funniest thing to do she genuinely thinks fucking Ruth Beatrice Waldorf or whoever this woman is the heir to the Waldorf method wants to come on guide to parenting yeah do you know what I love? She's a little. Ne- do you know what she is? She's a little networking weasel. Yeah. And this is what they. And this is what networking weasels do. They just say, "Oh, these are the people that do parenting podcasts." I'll email them and pretend I've listened. And little does she know. Loved your insights on the blah blah blah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute weasel. Absolute. What's she from? She's called Absolute Slow. Get her on. But it seems to be like an agent. She seems to be some kind of agent. We must have her on the pod. I we, think that would be so funny. We must have her on the pod, and we're both going to dress up, and I mean this, in nappies. Should we, should we book a studio for in nappies? We are going to both be in nappies, I swear to God. I'm not joking about this. We're both going to be in nappies. So when the, wait, a parenting expert has pitched yes. themselves to come as a guest yes. on our podcast, and, we're both and, going, and yes. your plan is? Yes, to both be babies. <laughs> I'm dead serious. She that walks would, into the studio. That's right. We hire a producer for the day yeah. to like walk them in. We, we yes. book a studio. We hire a yes. studio. We make it seem professional. Absolutely. We get a backdrop. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm absolutely 100% serious on this. And throughout the interview, at different particular points, we will both shit ourselves into our nappies. I'm not. This is, I swear on my life, this is what we're going to do. And just watch her face. We'll kind of make little reaches at her. Like, you know, it'll be, it will be the most wonderful, (laughs) wonderful thing. We will not make one complete sentence in English between us. Just to demonstrate her homeschooling ability by just teaching us how to talk. We're going to speak two-year-old level French (laughs) to this woman whilst in nappies and shitting ourselves. 
and it'll be it'll be the most glorious. I never. I don't know why we never anticipated this happening because we just called the guide to parenting because it's so fucking stupid. Yeah. But on a video the other day, when, when we posted up like something about <laughs> date, it was some date and I think someone like wrote underneath like angrily, "Guide to parenting?" <laughs> question mark. <laughs> As if you've forgotten your remit, guys. <laughs> you've gone off track, lads. Get back to task, boys. Back to task. Enough this of these tangents. We all like a bit of fun, but get back to what the podcast is really about parenting i swear to god if you if you're on the internet long enough and looking through comment sections you'll watch forrest gump and think that he's a like genius. an intellectual superpower yeah it's you watch forrest gump and think it's goodwill hunting that's right <laughs> <laughs> you're like jeez he fucking like, gets it people, he knows what's going on there people are so Unbelievable. And this is coming from, and I swear in my life, I believe this, I'm a fucking idiot. And as that, I look and I cannot believe the Isn't collective. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, we both know that we're fucking stupid. Yes. But also both know that we're smarter than most people. Yeah. It's wild. Online, for yeah, sure. Yeah, online, the people who are commenting on things. Good. But you have to also think, who comments? Like, in as an if, angry I, fashion, support the broadcast, no, comment no, on no, stuff, do whatever. No, but no, but the like people positive, who are just, you comment on things you're fans of. Who the fuck, like people who go around leaving negative comments, it's insane. Ludicrous. It's an insane. Just completely leaving. ludicrous. Yeah. Um. Anyway, we've got a lot on the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash parenting. This will be the best Patreon episode we've Three done. quid a month, that's less than a yeah. fucking coffee these days. Yeah. Come along, extra All episodes, right. blah, blah, blah. See blah, you blah. I love you. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.